Hey friends, I'm Jeffy G. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I've been using Logic for more than 25 years, and I gotta say I'm an advocate. And during that time, I've examined almost every third-party drum software that was available. That includes stuff from tune tracks like Easy Drummer 3, Addictive Drums 2, Stephen Slate drums, really all the major providers. And I've spent a lot of time looking at the lesser known products from Clevgrand, or from Blueprint, or from Spitfire Audio. And I found some great free drum software along the way. But lately, in my quest to find the most realistic sounding drums, I've ended up full circle all the way back, back to looking at Logic's drummer, or drummer assistant, the drum machine designer, and the drum kit designer and specifically what used to be the producer kits. These are the best in what Apple offers from Logic. And doing that 180 degree turn back to using Logic, I started thinking maybe Logic provides all the drum software you really need. Here's a song idea I started in Logic. So it has no drums, but it has a little bit of percussion. So I'd be inclined to add a drum track and my natural tendency would be to uh, open drum kit designer. I might pick a default kit. It's not that important right now because I can always change the sounds later. But let's say I go with say the Liverpool kit. There's 20 kits to choose from. And these are very realistic acoustic sounding kit. I might program my own MIDI. It's not too hard. I can open that MIDI, edit it, change it. It lists all the drums that are part of that drum kit. It's easy to program if you have that skill. But if I was feeling a bit lazy, I might just go to my MIDI library, which is extensive, hundreds, thousands of files, and just find a MIDI file that has a groove I like and drag it in. And that just saves me the effort of finger drumming on my keyboard, or on my launchpad device. Another option that I'd likely use is to create a pattern region. I really like the step sequencer in Logic. I've always found it to be really good. There's two ways you could go about this. You can just pick your drum parts. I could just pick where I want the kicks. If I want snares, hand claps. I could do this real time. to come up with something creative and interesting if you program it yourself but if you're not inclined to do that you can click on this icon and go into predefined patterns pick one and it'll populate the step sequencer for you so you've got a bunch of preset patterns you can choose from and you may have noticed there are user patterns that you can save so if you've created your own patterns like I have you could just pick one of those so maybe I've got this completely all wrong why aren't I using the delivered session drummer I have this preconceived idea that that tool was designed for beginners and that I was way beyond that but that assumption was a big mistake so let's just add a track and use the session player drummer so this is going to assist me in creating a drum track based on the information it can gather from just the tracks that I've created so far it creates a track instantly and you'll see off to the left here it's picked a drum kit it chose smash and down here in the bottom I have all of the parameters for controlling that beat <laughs> preset it's using for that kit is called broken glass. I could change that to something else. Try them out, listen to them, see what sounds good. I can decrease or increase the complexity of the beat and the intensity. I can control the various instruments and what patterns they play. I can either have it decide for me or I can make manual adjustments. And the fill amount comes in at a default. I can reduce or increase the number of fills that happen at the end of a phrase. I can adjust the swing and the complication of those fills. So pretty flexible, very fast. It just creates one section and I can cut and paste that section any way I want.
Now, the neat thing about that is it's added fills and things that I would otherwise have to program. And so it begs the question, why not always start with Drummer? Thinking of it more as a MIDI generator than a replacement for my own skills in programming drums. And if I want to take that data, I can convert it to a MIDI region or a pattern region. So if I want to do things beyond the interface it provides, it's pretty easy to do. Convert to MIDI. I could add some hi-hat open notes. I can erase some of these toms. There's too many of them. I can put in some hi-hat close notes. Modify this to my heart's content. Now remember, there's two distinct phases to this. You've got a lot of flexibility in terms of choosing the kit and the sounds. That's one aspect of programming your drums. The other is getting the MIDI into your system and programming the patterns and rhythms. You can do one without affecting the other. These are two independent streams of effort. So while I might start with some very simple patterns and a default sound, I'm gonna end up with the multi-output drum kit designer kits and I can pick and choose my drum sounds just like I would with Addictive Drums or Easy Drummer 3 and I can make it my own. And remember, that's if I'm after the most realistic multi-sampled velocity layered drums. When I was looking at all the third-party drum applications and software available, I made the mistake of assuming the Logic instruments were not as good. And that was completely wrong. I guess I was a victim of the advertising and the marketing behind some of the market leaders. When we add a drum kit designer kit, choosing MIDI drum kit designer, we can open the library on the left and under drum kit, we'll see there's roughly 20 high quality acoustic instrument kits. And on any given kit, you can modify the kick drums. There's some modifications that you can make. But they're kind of limited, unless you go for the multi-channel kits. And that's what I would recommend. So on the left here, you've got multi-channel kits, quite a list, slightly more than the 20, and they're designated with a plus sign. So we choose Brooklyn Plus, and what we get is a track stack with all the individual kit pieces. And if we drill into the kit itself, there's far more options for modifying the toms, more choices for the kick, lots of different snares to choose from. I didn't know this at first, but once I got into it and looked at the programming capabilities, I realized this is actually better than most of the market leading packages. There's greater flexibility, you can tune things better, and you can make your own kit and then save it. Take one of these demo tracks. Now here's where it gets really impressive. As a multi-track kit, you've got 16 different instruments with buses, separate effects channels, EQ. You can address each one of those kit pieces individually and really tweak this just like you had a real drum kit in the studio. If you wanted, you could install a channel strip on each drum. This is the SSL 400E. Effectively, by putting that on every track, it's the same as working with a console, you know, a 24 channel or 36 channel console in a studio. You've got all the same controls, compression, EQ, gating. If you're to look through these things carefully, you'll find that the first track is usually overheads. There's two tracks for the kick, one on the inside, one on the outside. There's a snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, high toms, and then on careful examination, you find that the output of each one of these drums is being sent to a bus and the bus consolidates those tracks so that you've got one slider for things like the kick over here and one slider that consolidates the snares. Same with the toms and one for reverb. Having those bus groups or submixes is already built in. You don't have to set it up. And that's a great way if you want to apply effects overall, let's say to the kick, you can pull up something like the Fat FX multi effects unit in Logic and have it apply to all the parts that make up the kick. It just seems that they've thought of everything here to make this environment as similar to a real recording studio as possible. And that's the case with all the producer kits or the multi-output kits as they're known now.
So although you can program the MIDI on the summing track stack, it does apply to all of the drum kit pieces. They even have things like Room A or Room B, which contain the characteristics of a particular sound within the room itself and leak because naturally playing the hi-hat doesn't pick up this leak from the snare, but you can add an amount of leak back in from the snare to make it sound more natural. And remember, that's just one of the kits. So let's pull up Retro Rock. You can tell when you open these kits that Apple has gone to extreme lengths with their engineers to make these practical and useful. So we've been talking about Drum Kit Designer as being the apex of Apple and Logic's capabilities when it comes to realistic acoustic drums. Well, what about electronic drums? Well, for that, the Drum Kit Designer is extremely flexible. I've done other videos on this. There are links up above and in the description. The flexibility here is extensive and I really like this product and I'll give you a couple reasons why. In the library, if you look under electronic drum kits, there are hundreds to choose from. Each drum kit is gonna load 16 samples per page and you've got three pages. One of the reasons I love this is that other single sample players only give you eight lanes, whether you're using XO or Playbeat or Trias or any of the new single sample players. They only give you eight lanes, and I need more than eight lanes because I want to use more than eight drum parts. On any given sound, you have the ability to modify these high level parameters, the pitch, knock, reverb, volume. And then for the kit overall, if you click on the kit title, you have kit controls. So you can apply similar configuration options to the kit overall. Drum Machine Designer is really just an envelope for Quick Sampler. So if you click on the sampler details, you have all of these other capabilities, LFOs, mod matrix, amplification, just for that one sample sound. And then just like Quick Sampler, you can configure that sample as a one shot, or you can go into slice mode or use the classic mode and you can assign it to different keys. It's just extremely flexible. The closest competitor that I've used prior to Logic's Drum Machine Designer was Battery from Native Instruments. Battery has kind of a similar approach. You can load as many samples as you want and you can tweak those samples to your heart's content. Now, if you've been a Logic user for a long time, you're probably familiar with some of the other products that they've offered over time, like Ultrabeat and Drum Synth. And you can still use both those products. So how does this all fit together? Well, Logic gives you everything. You've got the Session Drummer, not just as an introductory tool or a beginner tool, but really as a starting point for creating your drum beats. Think of it as a MIDI generator. Think of it as the front end tool that's gonna help you put together the patterns to support your song. Then you've got Drum Machine Designer, which is one of the most flexible and powerful single sample players out there on the market. Doesn't have a limitation of eight lanes, you can pull in samples from any source, your own samples, samples you've bought, sample packs that you found out there on the internet for free. And then when it comes to realistic acoustic drums, you've got Drum Kit Designer, which lets you pick and choose each kit piece individually and tweak them to make your own kit and your own sounds. But most importantly, in those multi-output kits, which formerly used to be called producer kits, they come loaded with a track stack of 16 channels or more where you have to think of each track as an individual microphone, just like you were in a real recording studio. And the Apple engineers have built into that features for summing and consolidating those tracks and applying plugins, which is gonna make your mixing effort that much easier. But they've taken away no flexibility here. You can treat it as your own. And in my mind, it's the closest thing to working with a real drummer. And as far as the quality of the samples, it's hard to find a lot of technical information from Apple on the depth of the samples and the round robins and the specs that define the sound. But I'm letting my ears decide, and from my perspective, it's as good quality or better than most of the leading third-party products. Now, do I have a rule on which product I use for different genres? A little bit. 
I find the drum machine designer is ideal for hip-hop, EDM, some indie music, or anything experimental when you want to use sounds that are a little bit unusual, and you're hoping to characterize your song by the use of interesting percussion or interesting sounds outside that traditional realm. But when it comes to straight-ahead rock and metal and jazz and funk and R&B, you really can't beat the kits that are in the drum kit designer. To me, they sound the most realistic. Now, if after watching this video you're thinking, I need to take another look at Logic, maybe it does deliver the only drums that I really need, then click on the like button. Feel free to add comments or ask questions and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.